presidential candidate Kamala Harris has no gun policy platform listed on her website for her potential presidential administration. And to divine what she will support, we must look into the past to see what she has previously supported. Welcome to Guns, Guns Gear and Guns with Gary Gunderson. I am Gary Gunderson. Let's look at her thoughts during her original presidential campaign. To reject the false notion that suggests you're either in favor of the Second Amendment or you want to take everyone's guns away, when in fact it's just reasonable. I support the Second Amendment. So a buyback program I, is a good idea. And part of that has to be, you know, buy back and give people their value, the financial value of, 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 of what they have and not just take things from people that, that have value. Well, that would be wildly illegal. And a mandatory buyback is taking guns away, so seems that's not a false notion at all. A mandatory buyback is nothing more than forced confiscation, and you can't really put a price on freedom, so no financial compensation is justifiable. Plus, she has no idea how many assault weapons there actually are. The over two million. Harris says about four million of the AR-15 style rifles in America were imported. There are five million at least, some estimate as many as 10 million. Regardless of the final number, no worries. She has the requisite experience in gun confiscation to get the job done. Does it, does it involve law enforcement um, essentially going to people's houses looking for specific banned guns? Does it involve perhaps creating a database of people who are legal gun owners? I mean, what kind of process are we talking about here? Well, first of all, as a point of distinction, I believe I'm the only one who has said that, that she will take executive action. So mine is not just a plan with some plan for legislation. I'm actually prepared to take executive action. I also have, as part of my background and experience, um, working on this issue when I was attorney general. And we put resources into allowing law enforcement to actually knock on the doors of people who were on two lists. And she also promised plenty of other executive actions that wildly exceed presidential power. Kamala Harris pledged to take action on gun violence as president, using executive orders to mandate universal background checks. To take executive action to ban the import of assault weapons into our country. My agenda includes attempting to get Congress to act, but if they don't within the first 100 days of my administration, I'm going to take executive action, because what we need is action. In recent days, former Vice President Biden has said about executive orders, they said, I'm going to issue an executive order, Biden saying there's no constitutional authority to issue that executive order when they say I'm going to eliminate assault weapons. Does the Vice President have a point there? Some things you can, many things you can't. <laughs> Let's let the Senator answer. Well, I mean, I would just say, hey, Joe. Instead of saying, no, we can't, let's say, yes, we can. <laughs> let's be constitutional. We got a constitution. And yes, we can, because I'll tell you something. <laughs> you know, when Biden is telling you to slow down on your unconstitutional executive action, you have gone way off the reservation. Sorry, wrong Indian. I will give the United States Congress 100 days to get their act together and have the courage to pass reasonable gun safety laws. And if they fail to do it, then I will take executive action. And specifically what I will do is put in place a requirement that for anyone who sells more than five guns a year, they are required to do background checks when they sell those guns. I will require that for any gun dealer that breaks the law, the ATF take their license, and by the way, ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Well, the ATF has been doing a lot of the A and the T, but not much to the F. The F does plenty, and granted, this was in 2019, but her selling five guns a year arguably makes more sense than the eventual ATF rule on requiring a license, because with their rule, even if you try to sell a single firearm, you may be required to have a license. Only recently has she admitted that executive action is not really a solution. I, again, I, I, I want to be clear that if we really want something that is going to be lasting, 
We need to pass legislation. But we can trust her. After all, she's a gun owner for personal protection. Yet, whenever she speaks on firearms rights, she only does so in terms of hunting. I am a gun owner, um, and um, I own a gun for probably the reason that a lot of people do, for personal safety. To reject a false choice, which suggests you're either in favor of the Second Amendment or you want to take everyone's guns away, supposed leaders in Washington, D.C., who have failed to have the courage to recognize, you know what, you want to go hunting, that's fine. She also continues to be shocked, shocked I say, that students could possibly learn safety drills and that it is traumatizing. Even though, even if all her desires became law, there would still be a threat of violent intruders in schools. And I'm sure that there are plenty of students here who, while you were in um, high school, even middle school, that you had to participate in a drill, right? where you were convened and your teachers taught you about how you need to go and run in a closet because there may be a mass shooter roaming the hallways of your school. And in our America, that should never have to happen. How many of you guys as college students had to have a drill during high school or middle school or elementary school where you, or even in college, where you learned about how you need to hide in a closet or crouch in a corner it terrorized you. It is traumatizing. She has also pushed the lie while vice president that everyone wants these laws and bemoaned these weapons of war on the streets. We aren't waiting for solutions either because the solutions exist. They already exist. People on both sides of the aisle want action. There is no reason why we have assault weapons on the streets of a civil society. They are weapons of war. They are designed to kill a lot of people quickly. Just about every type of weapon has been used in war, and all firearms are designed to kill. This is not an argument with any merit. Since getting the presidential nomination, she has announced... We are finally going to pass universal background checks. <laughs> Red flag laws and an assault weapons ban. Though there is no policy listed to even define that term. Harris has announced through a campaign memo that she no longer supports forced confiscation, but she has not made an actual public comment on it. However, she publicly praised Australia's gun confiscation project less than one year ago. Gun violence has terrorized and traumatized so many of our communities in this country. And let us be clear, it does not have to be this way. As our friends in Australia have demonstrated, and with that, then. So, who do you believe? Kamala Harris of 2019, of 2022, or now? What are her real policy goals? I certainly don't believe she will simply wait for Congress to act. But what do you think of her potential gun control platform? Let me know in the comments below. If you've made it to the end of the video, please consider supporting me on Patreon, joining our public Discord, liking the video, sharing it, and subscribing to the channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching.